We're here at Lambeau Field, just outside it here at the Tundra Trio. And what better way to welcome in all the fans here than bring in a Packer oh. Hall of Famer. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our delight to welcome in, finally, Hall of Famer <laughs> Jerry Kramer of the Green Bay Packers. Jerry, it is great wow. to have you here. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I'm very fortunate. I go to the Hall of Fame every year to, to do the ceremonies for ESPN, and I have waited for the moment to hear your name called for so long. I mean, the resume was there, all-decade team of the 60s, everything that went on. And what was it like finally when you got the, the knock on the door from David Baker and said, you're long overdue, and Shryman is now here? Well, you know, it was much greater and much bigger than I anticipated. I had kind of marginalized it in my mind to get along with myself sure. and be comfortable with not being there. And so I assumed that, you know, I, I might have missed a lunch with Bart and Paul or Jimmy and, <laughs> I, and I might have missed a couple things, you know, <laughs> little things like that. But we were there for like six or seven days and my whole family was there, all of my children and nieces and brothers and sisters and nephews and on and on and on. And so many of the guys it, that were formerly presented to the Hall of Fame were back, like a 50 or 60 of them, and I knew a lot of them. And they came up and were very gracious, and Jerry, it should have been a long time ago, and all kinds of nice things. So it turned out to be a warm and fuzzy, and all the little aggravations and irritations and frustrations went away. And I'm <laughs> giggling like a nine-year-old girl. <laughs> As you should. One, one of the, you know, the induction ceremony is fantastic. But that Friday night when you get the gold jacket, and the one thing I notice is obviously the greatest of all time are in that room. But still even there, there are levels. And the respect that you got from the other Hall of Famers, yeah. to me, if you could talk about that night when you're walking through the gauntlet of the guys with the gold jacket to get to yours. I was just, it, it brought chills to me to see how you were received by these by these great players. You know, Mike, that was a highlight. That was a real highlight. Uh, it started off with Bob Lilly and Namath and guys that I'd known for a while. And I got to uh, three guards, uh, John Hanna from New England, right. yes. yeah. Joe DeLamalier from Buffalo, and yep. Tom Mack from L.A. Uh -huh. And they surrounded me. And Jerry, you should have been here long ago. And Jerry, we used you as a, a model. Our coach said, just watch you. And, and a lot of wonderful comments like that. And they're crying. And I'm crying. And we're blubbering <laughs> and, <laughs> and holding up the line. <clears throat> but it was just a wonderful moment for me, uh, uh, maybe a highlight of the whole experience, is to have my peer group welcome me and say I should have been there a while ago. Yeah. Uh, Very cool. Th that's yeah. awesome. This Hall of Famer uh, and Packer legend Jerry Kramer is here with us. And one of the things that we always look forward to in Canton is the speeches. And what I loved most about your speech is you were letting an entire generation of football fans know perhaps what, what these fans know here, but what they didn't know is the genius of Vince Lombardi. Yeah, he was a very special human being, a very bright man, very educated man, and Greek classics was a love of his life. And Aristotle's philosophies and principles and beliefs were Coach Lombardi's philosophies and principles and belief. And they were such fundamental things that um, you don't think about early on, but preparation, commitment, consistency, discipline, pride, character, right. tenacity, belief in your team, those things are so fundamental, and yet they are such a important building blocks for an organization or for an individual to succeed and do what he needs to do in the world. So it was uh, something that uh, I learned from Coach Lombardi, <clears throat> and it made a huge difference in my life. And so I have kind of decided it was my duty to explain Coach Lombardi and explain his philosophies and his beliefs. So I... Uh, took it upon myself to understand that a little bit better and read a little bit more and studied a little bit more and, and came to the conclusion that he was right about virtually everything he had to say. I think what also has been great about you getting into the Hall of Fame well, way overdue, by, as, as we all know, was the fact that on your resume it says two-time Super Bowl champion. 
but you were a five time. Right. Where I mean that 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 to, to let everybody know there was actual championship games before <laughs> right. the Super Bowl. I think that kind of opened some people's eyes. Said, yeah. "Oh yeah. yeah, I mean there there was ball back then and real good ball back then." But I, I think it is a great way to let people know of just the greatness, not only of you but the Green Bay Packer team in those times. Yeah, that was a very special time. Of course, we didn't have the salary cap and we didn't have the billion dollar quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, everybody was happy, and we were having a wonderful time. It uh, it was a wonderful ride with five uh, titles in a seven-year period. And That's insane. Thought it would never end, of course. But uh, we had a wonderful group of guys and a wonderful feeling of, of, on the team. I was talking to some of the guys at, at the Canton about prejudice, and I said, you know, it'd be really interesting for us to say something about prejudice. And maybe we could help the world a little bit down the road. And I said, on our team, we were judged by our contribution to the club, by how valuable we were to the team. I don't care if you're short, fat, tall, ugly, beautiful, skinny, whatever. If you're a teammate and you make a contribution, you're my guy. Right. Come on in. You're part of the group. And wouldn't it be better if the world would judge maybe on some of those same principles absolutely in, instead of absolutely well, it was interesting i think a teammate of yours and a very good friend of mine bill curry uh talked about yes. the same thing about the huddle about the huddle it didn't matter you know what what ethnicity you anything about you is this you all came together and if the kind of the country or the world could be like that huddle and how you treated one another that we'd all would be in a, in a better spot I think so. I don't think there's any question about it. And it, it makes sense. I, I, I love Red Fox's humor. And Red was telling a story about prejudice one day. And he said, everybody's prejudiced. There's prejudice against little guys. There's prejudice against big guys. The fat guys, skinny guys, right. beautiful women, ugly women. There's prejudice all over. 